Welcome internet, Bread to Loaf here on a very dreary March day. We're inside the garage. Today we're gonna do a quick video on changing a oxygen sensor and on this 1988 Buick Electra. We only have one oxygen sensor and it is right after the exhaust manifolds all come together to one pipe right down there. So the reason we're replacing this oxygen sensor with a brand new one is because it has reached its service life of 30,000 to 50,000 miles. Right now, that sensor has 36,000 miles and I like to do a little bit of preventative maintenance. So we're gonna change it now. So before we get to the quick process of changing that, let's talk a little bit about what oxygen sensors are and what they do. All right, so since this is an older GM car, we're gonna be putting genuine AC Delco components. These are the components that would have come on it from the factory, so we're gonna go ahead and put a OEM supplied part. So here is the part number if you are doing this job on a very similar vehicle. So let's go ahead and open it up. And inside the box, you're gonna have a sensor that looks like this. So here's what a sensor looks like in its uninstalled form. So you have your sensor here on the end of the wire. They usually come capped like this. And then you actually have your exhaust gas inlet portion and this is where the magic happens right here. When this is installed on the pipe, exhaust gases are gonna flow past this. And essentially what the oxygen sensor does is, oddly enough, sense the oxygen content of the gases that are flowing by it. In this case, it's exhaust gases from a combustion engine, but it can be in many other applications. What a sensor like this does is essentially send a voltage signal to the computer to tell it about the emissions of the engine. So when the gases flowing past this contain a lot of oxygen, which means all the carbon monoxide has been oxidized into carbon dioxide, CO to CO2, that means your mixture is very lean. So all the fuel is being burned and you have excess oxygen. Now when this voltage signal goes up, that means you have a rich mixture, which means you are not burning all the fuel being injected into the cylinders. Some of it is being shot out the exhaust and out your tailpipe. That's not only bad for your wallet because you're spending a lot more money filling this up. You're getting a lot lower gas mileage. It also is bad for the environment. And same with having a lot of NOx or nitrous oxide emissions, also bad for the environment, which the sensor allows you to regulate. Now the voltages range from usually 0.2, which is lean to about 0.8 volts, which is rich and about 0.45 volts is what you want to see, but we don't need to do testing. We're just going to replace this anyway. So for gasoline engines, the perfect stoichiometric ratio of air to fuel is 14.7 to one by mass. So essentially 14.7 grams of air molecules for every one gram of gasoline burnt. And this sensor helps the emissions control computer determine that. So that's why we're changing it. So there are particular different types of oxygen sensors. This is a one wire, obviously, but there are two, three, and even four wire models. And the higher wire models have a built-in heater core element that is going to heat up the sensor right away. So then it gives you better readings because oxygen sensors work on heat to get their readings. This is just a one wire. This is a late 80s Buick. So this is the very early era of emissions controls and computers in cars actually so that's why this is kind of a more archaic model and some of the benefits include well you can see right in the box here you can improve your gas mileage improve your idle quality your performance and most importantly reduce your tailpipe emissions because save the earth those are some of the benefits improved gas mileage is one of the top benefits along with performance for most car guys so that's what we're gonna go for and lastly one thing that's really nice with these OEM supplied ones is they come with anti-seize on the threads. You can see that right there. A little bit of gray paste, that's anti-seize. So when you go to remove this, next time you change it, it will come out relatively easily. And or the one that is already installed is pretty much exactly like this. So it should come out easy. All right, enough chit chat. Let's get to actually doing some work. Here's a sensor down here. It is right into the end of the manifolds where they come together, like I said. It is the one wire version. And to make removal easy, we're just gonna snip off this wire right here. Otherwise, you can't really get a socket on it. And we're gonna pull it out that way. So first of all, we're gonna unclip it from right here and get to doing that. So let's go ahead and pull it out and then just lift up this tab. And it splits apart just like that. All right, obviously you can't do this on the new one, but on the old one, we can snip the wire off to make it easier to remove. So we're just gonna get right down to the base. Give that a snip, pull the old wire out. And then now we should be able to get a socket down over on top of this. So in my case, the size 
For the oxygen sensor is a 7 8 or 22 millimeter. 22 millimeter fits a little bit better, but I don't have a socket of that size, so we're gonna use 7 8 All right, well, I just actually snipped the end off, that white part. So there you go, I used the bolt cutters, and now I can get the socket all the way on it. Before I really couldn't, because of the little tip sticking out, but now we can do it. So as you can see right there, fits on. Now we can easily just remove it like that. And this is probably gonna be pretty tight, but that NEC should help us out. There you go. All right, now she's loose. Once you break it free, it should be pretty loose like this, especially if you have anti-seize. And there we go, there's the old sensor, just like that. So as always on this channel, make sure you compare the old and the new, make sure they're pretty much identical in fit and function, and that looks pretty good. These are the exact same model, or at least they should be, so I should have no issue there because I've already changed this one, but there you go. Exact same thread, style of tip, the wire, everything, so should be good to go. They do make oxygen sensor wrenches that allow you to get a full-size socket, but it has a little cutout so the wire can come out. I don't have one of those, so we're just gonna do the old brute force method of spinning it in there and then using a box end wrench, open end of a box end wrench to get it cinched down. But that should be no problem, it'll just be a little bit tougher. Okay, here we go, already halfway done. So just get your oxygen sensor down there and start threading it in by hand. You don't wanna use any sort of tool at this point should go in nice and smooth, especially if you have anti-seize on there, it should feel nice and smooth. Don't let your wire get all twisted up like I have. And you should be able to twist it a fair amount until the little compression rings for the ceiling start getting tight. And there we go, it's actually pretty tight now. So you don't want to put this on yet, you gotta wait until we tighten it down all the way. Like I said, in my instance, the best fit is a 22 millimeter socket or wrench for this particular oxygen sensor. I'm going to first try if I can get this end on there. Fortunately, you can just route the wire through there and then pull it down. The problem is the length. It's going to be hard to maneuver down here. And I wonder if I even have it the correct... Oh, that should be good. So I'm going to try not to kink this wire too much. It is somewhat fragile. Alright, well we got it on there, but I believe it's the wrong way. So I know it's kind of hard to see, but I do have the wrench on there. And I can get a little bit of movement on it. Not terribly much. Uh, I'm going to walk over to the other side real quick so I can get a better handle on that. So I got it on there and a good tighten. We'll give her one more good turn. That should be good. Obviously you can't get a torque wrench in here. That would be nice, but fortunately that won't be the case. That might be all we can do. I'll try to do a little bit more. Okay, so there we go. Fully installed. Got it tightened down. And now last step, don't forget is to plug in the wire so it actually so the computer can actually see it. So we're just gonna go ahead, online the tabs, snap it in like that, and then my car has a little holder on the firewall here. So we're just gonna slot that in like that. Make sure your wire is not touching the exhaust and that should be good to go. Well, that about wraps it up. I hope you learned something today. And even if you didn't, it was fun having you anyway. Stay tuned for more projects. This old girl certainly has a lot of things that still needs to be done to her, so a ton more videos coming your way. Go check out our videos on our ambulance and also on the Jeeps on our channel. We have a nice red 94 YJ. Great vehicle. Had a lot of fun with it over the years. So yeah, that about wraps it up. This is Bread the Loaf, signing off.